Hello, everybody. So I am here with a very special guest today. I am here with Da Vinci, the man who bought Bitcoin at 67 cents. Da Vinci, I'm very glad to have you today. Hey, good to be here. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, man. I, I, I heard about your story and I was really, really inspired by it. And I'm really curious to learn about you and your perspectives on blockchain, cryptocurrency and investment prospects and in this space. Awesome. Let's do. Let's do it. What do you want? What do you want to know exactly? Absolutely. So, so Da Vinci, you've been in cryptocurrency since nearly the inception of Bitcoin, and I wanted to ask you what ideals and beliefs surrounding this ecosystem facilitated your interest and passion for this ecosystem. Well, I I first started got interested in, into Bitcoin because one of my subscribers, because I had a YouTube channel uh, mm -hmm. since two thousand eight, I said, "Hey, what do you think about Bitcoin?" Because I was uh, talking about gold and silver as money mm -hmm. because of our current financial system has a, uh, has an end point that's going to show up and, and within our lifetime that I was like, and I was convinced in a very short time that, you know, you had to have a lot of some real assets, uh, not paper assets, which we were creating uh, in Infinitum. And so um, I, I also studied how our, our monetary system, how it works and how it's a, an unfair system and transfers well from the poor and the middle class. And we've done this over and over again. And there is an end result to using doing this kind of type of money. Uh, it always ends badly for yeah. the average person. Right? Always. And, and, it, and when it does end badly, it gets it gets even worse because whilst, uh, what happens is you, everybody's wealth gets wiped out and then they vote for yeah, let's vote for some crazy dictator like a Hitler or a Stalin mm -hmm. or a Mao, or and it's 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 a it's a repeating cycle in humanity that you cannot say okay, well that that, that happened last time, not this time. Okay, dude, you know what? Uh, <laughs> it's true. Bet on that. <laughs> or you bet on the history of humanity. I'm going to bet on the history of humanity. We're going to do the same things over and over again. So I'm going to prepare for that. And so when I saw Bitcoin, right, I knew that it was a solid system because once uh, I'm also a software developer. So I was able to read the source code and, and study that the source code, the application does work and will work. And on top of that, one of the things I talked about is that our problem with money is that gold really failed, not because, um, uh, there was anything wrong with gold. It's just that we don't want to use it as coins uh, to, to hand to another person, right? Mm -hmm. We want to use it. We want to have somebody else hold the gold for us. And then we so, just trade with an easier um, asset. First, we did it with paper. Then we we're doing an electronic uh, note, electronic digital um, send, sending. Okay, so somebody has to control who has what gold, right, on their database. Mm -hmm. And then um, you'd send it to the next person. Well, the problem with that is how do you trust um, the party that's that's keeping the ledger, mm -hmm. right? You can't because whether it's a whether it's a bank that's doing it or government that's doing it, right? They all lie and they all end up cheating. How do you know that? Well, uh, the United States defaulted twice. Yes, you're like in the last uh, hundred years. You're like what the 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 default the. Fault, the fault, huh? I stayed going in the boat. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> no, it, it, true. No, very well said. And, and and the United States, unfortunately, is has, has like you said, devolted a, twice in a hundred years. We've saw this in the French Revolution with France. We saw this in the Roman Empire during the crisis mm -hmm. of the, the the third century. This is a this is a, a common theme throughout history where governmental currencies tend to collapse as a result of the the ills and the mistakes of of that state and it continues throughout history and i agree with you 100 percent on that and and i believe that cryptocurrency like like you is that notion of sound money that that for the first time is not is not <clears throat> it doesn't adhere to the state and, and sure. i want to ask you when you bought bitcoin at 67 cents which was over over 12 years ago now, what was it like to buy Bitcoin when it was sub $1 in March, 2011? Like, how did you go about purchasing that Bitcoin back then? How, how, how tedious was it? It was next to impossible. much. I even have a video where I was like, Hey, you know what? I'll give somebody, um, you know, 
uh, you know, a discount. They, I saw, buy it off of them at a discounted rate on my YouTube channel, and assuming that I just assumed people would sell it, right? For mm -hmm. and because you know, it was um, nobody knew exactly what it was, right? Mm -hmm. But nobody really did sell it for I me mean, to a discounted rate. Um, because you know what, I was just figuring, right? So you know, it's really difficult to, for for me to buy. It's also very difficult to sell, and so um, uh, I was trying to get it that way. And so that didn't actually work. So and I wanted to get it before because I knew what it was, and so I was all and I didn't. The only thing that was available, right, to buy it was um, was uh, what's it called? The the uh, empty Gox, right? The exchange yeah. that went. The one that died back in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, it it was I just couldn't trust it. I was like, what an exchange in Japan and transfer my my wire money there? And I don't even you know I, I don't even trust wiring the system because it, they half the time they lose it you know, yeah. money and it was a big pain to get it back. So um, I didn't want to do that, and so I. Um, found different places where they'd use it, for, they'd sell it to you with PayPal at first. And that's that was what I was doing at first, was just buying it with PayPal. Wow. Right? And also then I started mining it as well, um, starting in uh, uh, Mar in uh, April of, of 2011. I started mining, I bought mining equipment and I was mining like crazy. You can look it up. Uh, if you look for DaVinci J15 and mining and Bitcoin mining, uh, you can see lots of videos uh, of me actually mining in my house. It's crazy stuff, crazy mm -hmm. stuff. I did uh, lots of crazy and insane things. It, it, it's amazing that you that you had this this foresight that many people did in in, in 2011 to to mine Bitcoin and to execute on on a particularly very new asset. That nobody knew, I feel like at the time, 100% that this was going to be where it is today, and it, it took a. Um, I can only imagine the the foresight and intuition that was necessary to say, okay, I believe that this is the future. I believe that this will be the digital version of what currency should have been in the exterior world, and well. The thing Sure. I, uh, the reason why I got it is because it was like because I, um, I understood, yeah. right? That one we could we could not the the um the, the what the call the it was called a double spend problem. Where how do you know a digital asset? That if I give if I give you this digital asset, I didn't give it to somebody else. So for example, right. with the movie, right? How do you know that you know somebody else didn't copy? You can't. You know that it can be copied as much times as you want. So. The, the 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 question was how do you ensure that no one counterfeits? Mm -hmm. And so Satoshi Nakamoto came up with a system which was considered impossible. Right. So for example, if I were to say, "Oh yeah, I've invented uh, the replicator, mm -hmm. where I can just press a button and replicate any kind of material out of nothing," mm -hmm. <laughs> right? You'd be like, "Yeah, I don't believe." <laughs> <You know what>? <laughs> <laughs> so there's that kind of thing, right? It was happening, right? A lot of people was like, yeah, I can't believe that. <laughs> that, that exists, right? That could work. That, that's, that's a little plot pitch that, that we invented. <laughs> and so that was the problem, right? Of people course. couldn't understand why that would work, why it was working. Because, yeah, you can't create a digital. They, they had intuitively understood they can't have a digital asset, and and even if we did, right? It just okay. So so what? They couldn't comprehend the fact that a digital asset, right, right can be used, be held by somebody, and because it's held by by you, right, and sent, you could transfer it some to somebody else. It has value that it can be used as money. It's a that's a really difficult concept to understand because um, you know if, if we were to go back in time when we decided to use gold, I can bet you any money people were fighting over saying that's crazy. I'm going to give some piece of metal or even call it a rock, probably right? A rock is for for my chicken, my heart, my my fat chicken. Yeah, go away, right? So you know, what I mean, it's it's it takes time, right, for for people to understand that. Uh, a concept, right, and any kind of particular concept, even money is is effectively a concept, 
Yes. And so why Bitcoin works as a concept is uh, really, really difficult for people to understand. Absolutely. And, and like even even bef- like you said, even before Bitcoin, like during the cypherpunk movement, for example, you had these attempts of a reliable sound e-cash, like, for example, like hash cash. Yeah. And there were very few people that actually try that actually understood the intricacies of cryptocurrency. There was one economics economist in the in the uh, 20th century, late 20th century, I think his name was Milton Friedman. And he basically one of his quotes was to some to, to paraphrase the Internet comes in three waves and the third wave will be a reliable e-cash. The shame he wasn't able to see Bitcoin, but he, yeah. absolutely, he absolutely played. a. He also he, he was one of the few that understood that with the digi- digitization, it would make sense that you would have an accompanied reliable currency thereof. And. I want to ask you then, Da Vinci, because you 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 have foresight and you have experience in this space that many people do not surrounding perspectives and ideals in this industry. And since your entrance into cryptocurrency over 10 years ago, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. Do you believe that cryptocurrency has lost its way surrounding its founding principles? Like, for example, the amalgam of DeFi with CeFi from numerous different centralized entities that collapsed in 2022. If so, how do we retract and, in essence, bring back the old order of principle and cryptocurrency? Well, I mean, here's the thing, right? We need decentralized, centralized systems, right, in order to onboard people right now, as it is. That's just the way it is. There will be a point where that 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 that's no longer needed. When there's there's going to be tipping point around thirteen percent of the population using it. That's a tipping point where uh, we don't need centralized. And it right. Is, right to to use the system because those people could actually um, um, transfer to other people using a decentralized system, mm-hmm. and that's going to come fast thanks to the government regulation. Yes. Um, as they try to force their way in to, to get their clack, uh, the more we're going to decentralize things, and the more we decentralize things, the more innovation will come out from that. And we're going to see one of the things we need to have for decentralization of everything is a decentralized storage system that everybody agrees works and is going to um, Mm -hmm. store your data. And then you pay uh, for use um, on this decentralized system because you're using the decentralized system. You're paying a little bit, which helps pay for the storage that you're using. So when that happens, um, then there's no place to um, no person to prosecute no one to go after right because you can completely build the website anonymously or whatever the application completely anonymously put it out there and just probably just invest the money and then it runs itself and so you happen to be just be one of the investors of the application that you built that anyone can invest in and earn money earn wealth and other people will use it as well to, uh, to do whatever they want to do. And so, for example, it's trading, for example, exchanges, right? One of the, the key examples of that is um, decentralized exchanges. Mm-hmm. A decentralized exchange, the way it works is completely different from an actually centralized exchange. Mm-hmm. Um, there is no uh, centralized entity to make the money, but you can't be the guy, I'm, I created this de- decentralized exchange, I'm making all the money here. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you you have to um, put in what's li- called liquidity, and the liquidity providers are the ones who are going to make money. Yes, on the decentralized exchange. I'm not going to get into details, but it's because it's really complicated. But they provide the, the they make the money. So the more liquidity you put in, the more you're going to make. And right, you could only make a usually a fixed percentage wise, like three percent or something like that, based on all the trades. But um, you are the one that's going to make the money because you're providing the liquidity for people to trade, for people to trade. So now, as the person who wrote the decentralized exchange, they they're not actually getting any money unless they do something, provide some value for the people, the end customers. They can't make any money other than. You know, providing other value, right, with real wealth, right, right. They only provide this facility for people with wealth to provide um, a, a facilities for 
um, somebody who doesn't have a lot of wealth and wants to do some trading or something like that. So you have one side, somebody who wants to provide, who has a lot of money and they want to earn, them, earn some money, right, without taking a loss, a risk, or reduced risk, or have a reduced risk, because there is a little bit of a risk, right, if you do provide liquidity in these decentralized exchanges, but that's another story. Um, and then they, and then you, you provide the liquidity, and then somebody else can actually make trades. And, and, and they, have, they have to pay you for that act, for, for providing that liquidity. And that's the, that's the advantage of that. So that's the model that's going forward with decentralization. Now, the issue is um, there is a website in order for you to interact with that application. And so they can point to these people with that website and say, hey, hey, yeah, 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 you, you're providing services here. Um, you, need to, you need to cut us in and you need to find out who's, who's doing what. Right. share that with us <laughs> yeah yeah uh, uh, that, that's a major issue that i'm seeing like the the the, the uh, encroachment of, of decentralized privacy in this space from exterior entities specifically in the united states and uh, this is something i'm seeing mostly in the united states and 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 in china but and i'm really hoping that cryptocurrency as a whole can can battle through this this time of regulatory compliance that I don't know if it's going to be draconian or not, because there really is no clarity surrounding the oversight that we see, especially with Gary Gensler. We don't have any regulatory oversight right now that actually has clear cut rules on what can and can't be done. And if they're not and if they're doing that specifically so that they're able to encroach on on cryptocurrency privacy and cryptocurrency innovations like Dex exchanges like you highlighted. And, and I want to ask you then, because I, I know that you have been very vocal about other projects as well that you're very interested in. And I wanted to ask you, what are some of your favorite projects? And are you working on any projects right now specifically that you want to share? Well, I have a lot of projects. One, I'm, I have my Dabitar um, uh, NFT project, right? That, uh, you know, I, that's for most of the community, right? So if you're, if you really enjoy my stuff, you want to be a part of my community, you can be part of, you can get access to doing uh, uh, um, free access to me through the, uh, what's called Zoom, right? There you can get a Zoom access of 20 minutes with me. You can get, um, you know, join me on yachts, join me in different parties and so forth. And also, um, you know, I, I, I recently with the last uh, giveaways that if you want me to follow you back on any kind of social media, right? If you have a specific debutar for that, I will uh, follow you on uh, my social media. So uh, that's an example. It's just really a community-based uh, NFT. And then I also am um, working on um, uh, NFT Shield. It's a place where you can show off your NFTs. If you have an NFT project, you want to show it off, you can, you can do that at nftshield.io. Um, also, um, I've invested in many, many different projects like uh, um, uh, Medieval Empires is one of my favorite projects and uh, um, um, Palm Swap. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to miss a few. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I just started, started rattling them off. I'm like, oh, God, dude, dude, you know what? It's, not, it's funny that this one person tapped me said, hey, Da Vinci, how you doing, right? You remember me? I'm like, no. <laughs> you remember this, uh, but I, uh, you invested in our project. I'm like, I did. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I have. I, I sprayed and prayed a lot on, on the on the different projects during the last bull run. So I just I couldn't even remember keep up with half the projects that I uh, invested in. Hey man, if it if it if it worked for you, I mean, I'm happy for you, man. Like I, I know, you know, in a bull market, it spraying and praying with the right projects will will end up doing very well for many people so you know i i i i did the same thing a few times and i, I did okay in, in 2021 i i didn't do okay in 2017 i didn't sell but you know what i needed to learn the hard way and um you know learn for 2021 and then hopefully whenever the next bull market comes i'm thinking maybe next year um so, so i guess my last question to you da vinci because i don't want to take up much more of your time is as an investor who has had massive foresight and intuition surrounding cryptocurrency back in 2011, where do you see the realm of blockchain by the end of, let's say, 2025 regarding innovation, regulatory compliance? Like, where do you see blockchain in two years from now? 
Well, the government, right, obviously has to stop this because this means that they're they're not going to get their tax money. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Not <laughs> yeah. has to stop it, but they're going to try. Because mm -hmm. right? uh, um, I, I know some of the audience is like, yeah, they're going to stop it. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Actually, you might be right on that because there was a historical event where governments all got together and stopped the Brutenberg Press where, you know, they were actually producing books, mm -hmm. horrible things, right, that, that they didn't want the masses to have. And, uh, and, you know, that's why today we don't have books and nobody reads, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> 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 Work out yeah. with them. Or the church, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, the books, the, the printing press was physical. Yes. It was easy, the location. So if every time you caught it, somebody with it, you burned it and killed the people. Uh, same with books, right? We're physical. This is digital. So, and there's no way to smell it, touch it, taste it, see it, that you have it. I couldn't travel with billions of dollars anywhere in the world, right? Be a billionaire. And nobody knows that I'm a billionaire. Yep. And travel wherever I want and spend that billions. Do you see the huge value proposition? Exactly. <laughs> when when you can't cross the border with ten thousand dollars worth of cash. Yep. Right. So yeah, uh, huge proposition. And I told people that in the very beginning. Try to understand why Bitcoin's so valuable because you can have a, a lot of wealth and no one know you have it. Exactly. This is huge. And they can't. They can't take it from you if they don't know you have it. Well said. Very well said. And, and, and I'm really hoping that the continuous notion of privacy stays strong within blockchain because it does, like we said, like I said before, like you said before, that there is definitely some encroachment on privacy. But I believe at the end, cryptocurrency and blockchain will, will prosper and thrive. And I don't believe any nation state will be able to stop the inevitable financial onslaught of being able to have cross-border payments, anonymity regarding what you own and what you don't own, and the ability to transact freely without the need of a centralized entity. So, you know, I, I'm very optimistic about the future. I, I, I will be in this space for life, and I, I'm really looking forward to seeing the future as well. And I, I want to say, Da Vinci, I, I really appreciate your you taking the time out you know, 30 minutes today, you know, letting me interview you because I've always wanted to interview individuals like yourself who have been around in this space for longer than many, 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 many people that have the intuition and have the knowledge base that many of us that got into cryptocurrency do not and understand the principles of blockchain, unlike many people that got into this over the last, I'd say, three to four years. So I, I want to say I can't thank you enough for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it because, uh, you know, I love talking about Bitcoin. As you know, I could run off for a long time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, and that's awesome that you would share your knowledge with people who, you know, have, you know, mid-sized YouTube channels, large-sized, small-sized YouTube channels because that's how, you know, you spread the knowledge and, and that knowledge is, is facilitated to other people that get in, you know, maybe in now or later. So, you know, I appreciate you you being a uh, harbinger of intellect surrounding this this space. Well, I do enjoy it. I enjoy doing the, sharing the knowledge with everyone. So if you are watching this and you want to start a new YouTube channel, you want me to come on that, it's absolutely free. Just uh, contact my staff. Absolutely. Your staff is incredible. So, you know, they're very, very, very helpful. So, you know, definitely. So, um, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. I know, I know you're at nighttime right now. It's noon in New York, 1230 where I am in New York. Um, so, yeah, I want to say I, I appreciate it again, Da Vinci, for all your time. Yeah, no problem. Cheers. Absolutely.